Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry for running a little bit late today. Um, I am going to talk about the differentiable physics for learning and control. Uh, these two these two pieces of work I'll be talking about today are jointly done with my PhD students, Junbang Liang and Yiling uh, Chao, as well as our collaborator, Avalado and Colton at Intel Research Lab. So the motivation here, uh, hopefully it's obvious by now, uh, given this is the uh, workshop on differentiable uh, vision, graphics and physics. Uh, what we are interested in is to embed differentiable physics simulation as a, a network layer. Um, in a, independently, you can also enable gradient based learning and control for material estimation. That's one of our application, as well as motion control and model based reinforcement learning. Um, and the first piece of work that we that I will be talking about is our joint work on uh, differentiable cost simulation. So the current state of our uh, in differentiable physics when we started this work was largely uh, due to the fact that we that the, the existing physics simulation at that time were limited to largely rigid body dynamics um, and it's not necessarily able to guarantee physical correctness. So we were very interested in formulation that will be scalable to higher dimensional space, such as deformable bodies, as well as different, uh, uh, as well as fluids. And, and, in, and in fact, we will have a paper on differentiable fluid simulations uh, to be presented at AAAI next year. So the key contribution of this paper, uh, of this work is, um, are the following. Uh, first, uh, we have proposed uh, a dynamic collision detection methods to reduce the collision dimensionalities, which I will you know, talk about next. Um, and then we also presented a, a formulation for the gradient uh, computation uh, that can be used for collision response using implicit differentiations. Lastly, we have an optimized back propagation using QR decomposition to further accelerate the overall computations. For the gradients uh, for the physics solve, we essentially derive from the basic formulation of, of force is equal to ma, uh, the input are mass and, uh, and forces, and what we compute is the output, which, which is accelerations. To, to derive the gradients for back propagation, what we do is the standard formulation of using the, um, essentially computing the um, differentiation with respect to the loss function, uh, whatever loss function we define it to be. And we uh, basically uh, compute the differentiation with, of the loss function with respect to A uh, by, by given the, the same differentiation with respect to the mass and the forces. The solution are being shown here in that formulation as we derived. Um, for the collision response, we basically uh, are formulating the dynamic collision detection as a way of enforcing a constraints on the systems. And it is uh, essentially setting the constraints to be the distance of the node with respect to the faces uh, on the other object given uh, uh, in between a uh, time step T. And um, what we want is to ensure that this distance between the node, um, or you can think of it as a vertex of a one object with respect to another face of, on the other object between two time steps to be less than delta, where delta is set in our system to be the thickness of the cloth. Um, our objective here is to um, essentially minimize the energy function to avoid collisions. So we want to set the formulation as you see here that a distance subtract the, um, the delta is greater than or equal to zeros. So the constraint formulation is, uh, it's basically shown th this particular distance function satisfy the constraint formulations. Then our objective formulation can be solved using the quadratic programming as minimizing the energy subject to these constraints. So using the KKT condition, we can um, essentially derive the solution in a, for our implicit differentiation as being shown on the screen here in the linear um, formulations here. Um, and the solutions are being shown here where uh, uh, dz and d lambdas are being provided by this uh, matrix formulation in the linear equation. 
shown on the screen. Now, as you could see, this really depends on uh, essentially the size of matrix for this linear, uh, for the, that capture the linear equations here. And the size of matrix for cloth system, it's fairly large depending on the size of the cloth, essentially. The number of vertices that we have in the cloth is huge or it can be very big. Um, so, but the, the reality is the number of nodes that we need to be worried about and to be concerned about calculating these distance uh, constraints is actually fairly small. Um, so what we did is we used the QR decomposition to really focusing and zooming in on the nodes that need to be uh, computed. So we use the QR decomposition to, uh, to reduce the size of the matrix. And this will essentially give us a theoretical speed up from essentially order n cube uh, to order n m square. As a result of this, this um, computational uh, reductions, what we have, as you can see here, if we have a mesh resolutions of 16 by 16, 32 up to 64 by 64, and the respective matrix size reductions, uh, as you can see here from the baseline to what are uh, to after the QR decompositions for the matrix size that we were able to derive, um, as well as the so the matrix size is being reduced by about roughly one order of magnitude, and this the, this leads to the overall running time speed up by about two order of magnitude, as you can see right here, uh, comparing the running time of ours versus the running time of the the baseline systems with all the QR decompositions. We have also applied this methods to an uh, application where we actually have to infer the material directly from um, the, the, uh, from, from the videos. Um, and again, we have the baseline and we also use the state of optimization formulations and then compare to our methods. So this table shows that using our method, we can achieve the best running time, uh, which is the lowest but also um, the lowest errors overall, as, as you can see on the, on, the, um, on the screen in this particular table, the error reduction is pretty significant as well. And uh, um, we have also uh, further trying to apply to, or actually apply our approach on the motion control, which I'm gonna show you next in the video. Uh, again, we, uh, we compare our system against the state of our system PPO. Uh, we also have a simple baseline approach that we implemented by controlling of the point mass uh, from, one, uh, from a point on the cloth and draping it into, dropping it into the basket, which I'm going to show next. And again, our methods achieve the best performance with a much smaller number of simulation. So this is a scenario where we have a piece of cloth, we are trying to pick it up and then drop it into the basket. With our baseline simulation, you could see earlier that it, with just a simple point mass manipulation, it was not even able to reach the basket. With our approach, um, we were able to drop, we were able to get the uh, cloth drop into the basket in just about 53 iterations. With PPO, Unfortunately, we were not able to even reach the target. And this is a side-by-side -side comparison um, using the baseline with the point mass and within hours. Um, and also with PPO, it, it never really take off. All right. So uh, in summary, what we have introduced here is a fully differentiable cloth simulation where we, we provide a dynamic collision handling. And we also derive the gradients using impl implicit differentiations. We further accelerated uh, this formulation for the backward propagations by using a QR decomposition to obtain a much smaller matrix and thereby a faster overall running time. We demonstrated on two application one of them is material estimation of the cloth and the other one is motion control of the cloth. Uh, we, we have done a comparison uh, with a side-by-side -side comparison against uh, a couple of the state of our methods. And next, I'm gonna talk a bit about the extension of that work to now um, handle both the, the 
the rigid body and the deformable cloth coupling. And again, this is a joint work with Zhong Mang Liang, uh, Vladen, as well as another PhD student, Yiling um, Chao. So the, most, uh, the motivation is the same as what we had before. Uh, what we want to do is just simply uh, be able to create a differentiable physics simulation as a network layer and being, being able to embed it in the network for performing various type of control of physical systems or uh, you know, doing, uh, solving other inverse problems. But we are also interested in going a step further in this particular work. What we were interested in is also to ensure that the differentiable physics engine that we develop is scalable to a large number of interacting objects, as you could see in some of these videos, uh, the teaser that's being shown here. Uh, on the left, you see uh, essentially a domino effect. Uh, you have a cloth pushing on a stack of dominoes, and, and these are multi-object interaction. Um, and we also want to be able to handle non-trivial shapes, as you can see in the middle one, where you actually have a fairly complex uh, bunny and armadillo being wrapped around in a sheet, and as well as deformable um, sheets or cloth interacting with a rigid object like, uh, like the bouncing balls uh, um, on the trampoline here. And we also want to be able to handle different type of material property as well. Um, and as most of you have seen already, um, there, there are different type of physics, uh, differentiable physics simulations. Um, you know, groundbreaking work like Diff Tachi was one of the first, and however, it doesn't scale well to large scene. Uh, other really uh, more recent work that have been done, uh, they, are, they, are, they are, you know, shown great promises, uh, but they can support general 3D shapes. Um, and then our most recent work for cloth simulation, even though it can handle cloth, it, it can only handle cloth and, and there is no support for the coupling between the cloth and rigid body. And so this work was really going one step beyond to consider the coupling of different dynamical system being mixed together. So our two goals, uh, as I already mentioned earlier, is scalability and, and general reality. So for scalability, we need to think about how can we further accelerate some of these computation. And one aspect is to localize the collision handling. As I have already inferred in the previous, the previous work, that many of these collisions that we see in these complex dynamical systems are actually sparse. So we want to take advantage of that as well in this uh, couple of dynamical systems. And also we want to be able to compute gradients that will that can be computed very efficiently in a very large scene with the multiple body. Um, and the other objective, as I already mentioned, is that we wanted to be able to model different objects, not just deformable cloth or particle system. So one of the things that we have actually tried and um, experiment with in this particular work is to adopt 3D meshes that have been very, very popular in different modeling and simulation communities, as well as in computer graphics, um, so that we can use the mesh structure to capture all different types of complex structures and, and objects. Um, and then last but not the least, it's the complex interaction between different dynamical system. In this particular example, we were focusing on rigid body and cloth. So for mesh simulation flow, flow, you generally speaking, you know, this is pretty, uh, hopefully it's familiar to most of people who work on physics simulation here. You, you want to initialize your state, which is typically the position and the velocity and, and the time steps. Um, and then you want to be able to update your dynamical systems for your state and resolve any kind of possible collisions or intersection that results uh, from these, these simulations and increment your time. Um, to do so, um, we, we could do these uh, numerical updates by using auto differentiations for many of the steps. So the, the challenge here is really to figure out how do you um, update um, the, it, update your, your states and also resolve the collisions. And that really is sort of the focus uh, for this particular work as well. And again, we are using the same formulations as, um, as the previous work. We need to compute 
um, the, the gradient using the loss function, uh, differentiating with respect to the variables here uh, for back propagations. And we essentially went through the same deviations, except now we have to worry about a coupling between the two dynamical systems. Um, and, and this is really the, the challenge part where we actually have to derive our equation considering both the rigid body and the deformable bodies. Um, so now the simulated objects are essentially um, rigid body as well as a deformable cloth. So the degree of the freedom for our linear system will now have the six extra variable for the rigid body as well as the three M variables for the deformable cloth. So we, we have um, used a stack general coordinate system as you can see here. Um, and, and this, what this is just mean is that um, we now have to have a slightly different approach for, for solving the collision response. We use the global uh, linear complementary formulation to solve these problems. Uh, so this is a little bit different from what we have earlier. And um, we tried this first and it, it turned out to be fairly slow. So then we looking into other alternative and what we end up using was the impulse based solution. It's easy to couple between different uh, materials and you can be, it can be solved between um, just local collisions. This was much, much, much faster. And this, so we introduced that concept of a collision zones that essentially focusing using hierarchical uh, structure to zooming on different zones where the collision would occur. And we can handle each one of these uh, contact uh, within the collision zones. For the collision zone or what we call the impact zone, we adopt the, the, the similar kind of concept from the Harmon paper earlier in 2008. And the constraints are being derived uh, essentially on two types of uh, constraints, either a vertex face or a edge edge impact. So we need to establish a formulations or essentially a, a collision constraints for each type of uh, possible collision, either you know, edge edge or vertex face. And again, we need to use the um, minimum energy formulation. It's a, a, it's a quadratic programming com computations, solving the same sets of uh, constraints that you have seen earlier, with the exception now that we also have the distance constraint uh, coming from the edge edge uh, collision as well. Um, so we treat the rigid body as one note, and this is a um, little bit different uh, from the earlier work where we have just purely deformable body in this particular formulation. So what we have here is a set of nonlinear constraints for the optimization. Um, and again, it's subject to the, K the same KKT condition at the optimal points. Um, the detail of all the mathematical deviations and formulation can be found in our paper. Uh, in ICML paper this year. Uh, I just want to kind of show you the result really quickly. So with this approach, um, we were able to handle uh, essentially objects of, we were able to handle seeing a very large object and we, comp we compare our method with Chen Queen, as you can see right here. Uh, our approach, it essentially have uh, a, a, it's essentially scaled linearly in a large scene and it's really um, output sensitive. So basically the running time is dominated by the number of collision that you have. Um, so the, the larger of the scenes, the more collision you would have, but it has this much, much smaller overhead uh, in comparison to chain queens. So that was um, a multi-objects um, simulation scene in the previous scenario. In this particular scenario, we focus on a bunny and a piece of cloth draping over the bunny uh, or just passing or just interacting with a bunny. Uh, we have tried this particular benchmark scenario using a relative uh, you know, variations in the cloth size in the mesh resolutions. And uh, again, you could see that um, the running time of our system scale linearly uh, in comparison to uh, the, the, queen, the, the Chen Queen's system, which is, uh, looks, appears to have a quadratic running time. 
and, and again, this is largely due to our formulation that we are focusing um, on sort of the sp handling the sparse contact so that the system does not depend on the overall quadratic dependence you see due to the cloth and the potential number of interaction, but it's actually depending on the actual number of collisions. Um, we have also applied this. Um, we also have compared um, our methods against uh, CMAES uh, as a method for solving the optimizations. And this com combination, uh, and we tested on the scenario where we actually have a ball being manipulated in a deformable cloth to try to drive the, the ball toward the, the target locations. And in this particular example, you can see how quickly our methods converge, which is in blue compared to CMAES. Our method converged 10 more than 10 times faster against the state of R. Um, here is another example where we actually uh, take two stick trying to control and manipulate a block where you actually have an armadillo. So you can really see this is really a, a couple complex dynamical systems uh, that really uh, essentially have multiple objects in the scene. And again, what we want to do is to move the block so that it, it will move toward the target location where the start location is. And we can achieve this, this kind of uh, you know, motion control for a parallel gripper in about two seconds or so. Now we compare our system against DDPG and again, you can see that for this particular control scenario, we are able to achieve a much, much faster conversion against uh, DDPG, which is in red. Uh, similarly, we have another example where we have um, a deformable sheets wrap around a, a cube. And what we want to do is be able to take the deformable sheet that is controlling the, the position of the cube and move it toward the uh, target location that's where the star is located. And for this particular example, we compare our system against DDPG as well. And you can see the convergence of our system. It's, it's also faster, much, much faster. Uh, DDPG is a method um, that use reinforcement learning. So um, here are a few more examples that you have seen earlier. So these are different uh, control scenarios where we have a, a piece of cloth hit on um, uh, essentially a dominoes. They were standing vertically, but the fall of one domino will affect the motion of the other. Uh, so this is really a really interesting dynamical system. Uh, here we also have in the middle, you have a deformable sheets which wrap around a couple uh, figurines that, that are fairly complex. And so you have a complex control problem here with a coupling of deformable sheets with rigid bodies. And last is a trembling, controlling the motion of the rigid ball. And all these are just sort of a few examples that essentially use our system to achieve the motion control as you could see there. Um, so hopefully what we have demonstrated here, is, as you could see through these different uh, scenario, is a method for a scalable and a general differentiable physics. Uh, we are looking at uh, using sort of similar philosophy, but obviously, um, you know, different, uh, uh, different form mathematical formulation will need to be derived for diff different dynamical system um, and trying to extend such a framework and build more, um, dynamical systems using the differentiable formulations and also looking at a coupling of these different dynamical systems in our future work. Uh, as I already mentioned, most recently, we have been looking into control of fluid simulations, um, which is upcoming in, in next year's is triple AI. Uh, but there are many, many more interesting applications. Uh, one of the area that will be potentially of interest is to definitely obviously look at potentially doing things like a coupling visions, physics, and rendering together. Uh, for examples, can we use video as an input to derive simulation parameters that we need or to derive rendering parameter that we need? And so this will be a really, really interesting future directions, I think, where different community um, a researcher in computer vision, computer graphics, and physically based simulation can really collaborate. Okay, 
Um, I'm going to end right here and uh, take any uh, question or is, is it possible to take question? Probably not. I think we are already running behind Thanks the so schedule. Thanks so much, May. Uh, I'll, I'll just do one question nonetheless. Uh, there, there have been a few questions popping up. So yeah, the question is, is it important to get the modeling of the system right? Or could you do something like learn a residual to the policy obtained and considering clause of point pass? I, uh, so, so that's a really interesting question. Um, as many of you who work on sim physics simulation, you know that the modeling of physical simulation is critical. And um, what happens if you are not able to get it right perfectly? Uh, I don't know how much I can say, but what we have found recently is, is the very recent directions and recent work that we have been doing is that it is possible to make some correction afterwards, even after the, the network. Um, and then you can potentially take that corrected course of action and, and feed it back to the network for more training and, and more improvement. Um, and one of the visions I almost hope that we could move as a community is to consider the possibility of this kind of feedback loop where we don't have to have the perfect physics formulations that will model a given dynamical system. And through the examples, we can improve the model itself. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so, so through the network and the feedback loop, we could even use that to correct the physical model that we have, uh, let it be just a simulation parameters or the simulation formulation itself. So this is, again, an area where I think visions, um, you know, rendering and uh, graphics folks and simulation folks can really work together. I think it will be of a tremendous potential where really we are using data-driven approach, you know, deep neural network, learning-based algorithm to improve our physical formulation and, and then using the physical formulation to actually make learning more efficient because, you know, one of the directions that machine learning community is moving toward is actually to take advantage of the simulation data. So if we have this kind of tight coupling, I think, you know, there's a lot to be said regarding what are, what are the possible direction that we can go to in terms of improving both uh, the, the physical model we have as well as uh, the predicted accuracy from the learning algorithms. Yeah, uh, th thanks so much for the uh, suggestions and also for a great talk.